Hi, I'm Megan. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm here today to share with you some of my thoughts on the projects that I made in January. It's Friday, so I'll also be doing a little bit of chit chat about what I am up to next. Um, so if you're interested, I hope you stick around. I'm going to work backwards through the month of January to share with you what I have made this month. So the very last thing that I made in the month is the sweater that I'm wearing right now. This is the Pearl Cardigan from Tilly and the Buttons. It's their brand new pattern and I bought it the, the minute I read the email. So I get their newsletter, I opened the newsletter, I saw it, I was like add to cart, I printed it, I put it together, I cut it out and I sewed it up on the 31st and it took me about I would say like maybe an hour and a half to put this cardigan together. It is a wrap cardigan, so it has a full wrap. Um, it's like a ballet style cardigan, and I have always wanted a sweater like this. I made the version that has the balloon sleeves. It comes with a short sleeve, a long straight sleeve, and the balloon sleeves, and I just think it is um, trendy and comfortable, and also it makes me feel really cute. This is a really cropped cardigan, so this one hits me like right at the natural waist. Um, I can wear this with high-waisted jeans if I don't have a camisole. I can tuck my camisole in and, and it will it will just come right to the top of my high-waisted jeans waistband. But I also wear it with the camisole out from underneath it. I've seen some people wear it without anything underneath it, just as a top. I don't think I'd be comfortable with that, but you might be. Um, I really enjoyed making this pattern. So I made mine out of a, a sweater knit that I bought at Fabricland here in Calgary. Honestly, I was really disappointed when I bought this. Um, it was beautiful brushed sweater knit. It was really soft. I washed it and it's polyester and it pilled, like completely and entirely pilled. If you can see the texture. Um, but it pilled really evenly and so I'm just gonna go with it. I decided I had two and a half meters of it. I had spent good money on it. I got it for like a pretty good discount, but I was just gonna go with it. So. Um, that was a bit of a disappointment, but also better to have found out the fabric was going to do that, like I pre-washed it and put it in the dryer, than to have pre-washed it, hung it to dry, and then accidentally thrown it in the dryer and have my sweater pill, because I feel like I would have had a bit more of an emotional response to that. Anyway, um, Tilly and the Buttons patterns are great for beginners. I really enjoyed making this. It came together very quickly. I put it together almost entirely on my serger. I did the little pass-through hole on the bottom band with my sewing machine um, and the gathering on the balloon sleeves with my sewing machine, but the rest I did it on my serger. I did um, fuse some interfacing strips along the neckline just to help it hold that shape, and I think that really helped me get a really nice finish. I really appreciated with these patterns that the Tilly patterns are so well marked. It marks the notches on the pattern piece. So you get the pattern piece for the neckband and the notches say shoulder seam notch. So you know exactly where to line it up, which I think is great for beginners. Pretty confident putting a neckband on a garment now, but I wasn't three years ago. So I do appreciate that. I think this is gonna look really cute. Again, with jeans um, over top of some of the dresses that I made last year that have this pink or sort of mauve color tone in it and um, well into the spring. So it's cozy and it's warm and I feel really cute. Um, I used to work for a ballet company. I was not a dancer, but I worked in management and um, I always wanted a ballerina cardigan, but I thought that was a bit much. But yeah, I'm really happy with this and totally would consider making another one with the straight sleeve, just sort of for summer out of like a nice breathable bamboo. I think um, Jersey would be really cute or um, you know, a sweatshirting. I think you could top stitch the neckband too for a really nice finish might add something to it um, but yeah the the pearl cardigan I think is a winner the one gripe I have is about the Tilly um, size bands so they have really um, expanded their size bands they're more inclusive I would say um, definitely than they used to be and that's great what I don't love is is that you've got you when you buy your pattern you have two choices so I understand why they did that so there's the, like straight and small plus sizes and then sort of an, a bit of an overlap with smaller plus sizes to their end of their plus size range. But then on top of being, so I bought the pattern that was for sizes, like I think 16 to 32, but then they're Tilly sized. So it was Tilly sizes six to 15 or 20 or whatever it is. Um, so I couldn't quite figure out, at first I thought I bought the wrong file because I was looking at sizes six and seven and didn't get in my head that that meant Tilly six and seven, not US or UK size six and seven. I, just, 
I would just prefer that the number, the sizes be called the numbers. Like whatever arbitrary scale you're gonna go for, go for it, but it referred to it as both, which I found to be a lot of work to think through after a very long day uh, in the office. The second last thing I made in the month of January was the Fraser cardigan from Love Notions. And I did do a pattern review of this one. I tested it, I made mine out of uh, periwinkle waffle knit from Black Rabbit Fabrics, and I used cotton lycra coordinating to do all the bands and pockets. Um, I have worn this quite a bit around the house and I wore it out with some girlfriends when we did like a lunch in one of their houses on Saturday, um, which was really nice. It's been washed a few times, it's nice and soft. Um, the pockets do bag out as I was worried about when I've um, been wearing it or if I put something in it like a heavy phone, they do stretch out, but I washed it and dried it and they sort of shrunk back to place. So the recovery is good. I'm happy with this cardigan. I think that um, if, if you want all the details, I would just watch the video that I made for it or some of the other videos that testers posted. And I think it is a really nice curved hem cardigan. It's great for lounge wear um, and it is really cozy. So I have liked wearing it quite a bit. The first make that I made in January and the final one I have to show you today is actually two projects, but I only have one here today. And that's okay because they're the same, just in two sizes. And that is the Sloan sweatshirt from Love Notions. So I made matching sweatshirts for my daughter and I. This is mine. I made it out of this um, printed sweatshirting from uh, Rick Rack Textiles and I used a coordinating bamboo ribbing also from Rick Rack. I used that ribbing on the neckband, the cuffs and the hemband and it was so nice. Um, Emma just loves her. She's worn it a couple times this morning when I went to go make sure that had the sweatshirt so that I could film this video. She, uh, she <laughs> ripped it out of my hands so she could wear it to school. And um, you know, if you've ever had to deal with like a highly emotional, almost eight year old at 6.30 in the morning when it's minus 30 degrees outside, you just, it's, you've got to pick your battles. And that, that one, I wasn't gonna win. I also don't have any really good photos of her wearing the sweatshirt because she's very fast and I can never sort of pin her down to take a picture, but that's okay. It's the same as mine, but sized for a seven to eight year old. I've made this lone sweatshirt lots of times, so it was really comfortable with this. Um, I did make a mistake on mine though, because I had adjusted the pattern the last time I made it and added quite a bit of length. Um, the sweatshirt was longer than I was expecting, but then also when I cut out the hemband, I made a mistake and I cut it twice as deep or you know, this way up and down as it needed to be. So it was the right length, but the width was twice as long. So when I put the hemband on, it, the sweatshirt came down like well below my bum. So sort of almost mid upper thigh. Um, it was definitely more of a tunic and that wasn't the look I was going for. So I wore it one day, then I came home and I cut the hemband and some of the sweatshirt off, just a little bit extra seam allowance so that I would remove, you know, about half an inch or so of the sweatshirt, cut the remaining band in half and reattached it. And I think it's great. This is one of my favorite patterns. It is a go-to sweatshirt pattern. The one thing that I wish I had done, and so I'm telling you in reverse order, these are the first things that I made this year. Um, when I made the Fraser cardigan, I did a full bicep adjustment and I wish that I had done that on this pattern. I will do that moving forward when I make a knit top or a knit sweatshirt. I'm gonna check the biceps because, or really any garment, because that full bicep adjustment, even though I only added an inch of width to the bicep on the Fraser cardigan, it made a, a world of difference in the fit. The Sloan sweatshirt is great, like it's really comfortable and I'm, I'm happy with the fit, but I think that that little bit extra room in the bicep would just make it just over the top to be like a perfect fit for me. So next time I will do that. Um, and I, I measured the arm size on this pattern. I both checked the finished measurements on the pattern for the pearl and I measured the pattern piece to see if I thought there was enough ease in the bicep for this one, and it, it did have enough, so I didn't do an adjustment on this, but that is gonna be part of my step going forward. I have to grade my patterns between sizes anyway. Often I check to see if I need to add length. What's one more adjustment? It took me maybe 20 minutes, um, and I think as I get better and better at it, it will take less and less time, so I'm excited about that learning. I think that's a really good progress for January. Um, my sojo came back in full force in the last week, which really I found really reassuring and made me very happy. And like, all I wanna do is sit at that sewing machine. So I did make this sweatshirt, uh, or this sweatshirt, this wrap cardigan. And then I also have cut out um, another Rhapsody blouse, finally out of my very precious rifle paper company rayon that I bought six years ago. I have cut into that fabric and it is waiting to be sewn together. 
So I'm working on a pattern test right now. Um, and then the next project that I'll do is that Rhapsody blouse. And then I'll be able to show you that. I'm not gonna make a ton of concrete plans, I think for February. Um, as you know, and I've learned, planning is a hit and miss for me. Um, my sojo came back, but it might disappear again tomorrow. And I don't wanna put too much pressure on myself um, because I, I do like to achieve what I set out to achieve. And so when I make, you know, promises or I tell you I'm going to do something and then I don't. I don't feel great about that. Um, I'm, I think that I have a pretty busy February coming up ahead of me, but I definitely want to make time to sew where I can because it just made me feel so good to sit down at that machine and do this. Um, it felt great. So that's awesome. Don't have too much else to share with you that is very exciting. It is just sort of getting through the next what remains of the winter, which here in Canada could be, you know, four months um, as we get through the slog and, you know, look forward to the spring coming. I am, you know, I think maybe I might have enough sweatshirts now, so I should be thinking about some other garments to try. Um, I shared last week a video with sort of my review of 2021 and I am working on my look forward for 2022. It's just taking me some time to put it together because I want to be really intentional, both about the work that I put into the video, but also about the things that I say in that video. Like it doesn't serve me very well if it's just sort of like a flash in a pan in the moment, I think this. Um, so really have been enjoying the exercise of thinking about what is it that I really wanna achieve when it comes to sewing this year? Um, I know it's February and you know, good, good things take time. So anyway, I hope to have that video to share with you in the next, you know, within the next week though. So anyway. I hope that you have some exciting sewing projects ahead of you, some interesting patterns to work on. Um, did you try the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl cardigan? Are, are you gonna try it? Um, it? It, you know, I saw uh, a few photos on Instagram, but not a ton. So I think if you're interested in trying it, let me know. Um, what would you make it of and which version? Or is there something else that's caught your eye lately? So anyway, I hope that you have a great day and I will see you again soon.